first this time. Uh, do you believe that global warming or climate change is a real threat to our future? And conceptually, do you support cap and trade? I oppose uh, cap and trade, as you can see on my website. I'm the only Republican running for the United States Senate. Uh, there's 107 of them who admits to the science of climate change. Uh, take it or leave. Uh, I'm a scientist. Uh, I'm a technologist. I invest in technology companies. We depend on technology for our modern way of life. The solution that I'm proposing, I'm finding, is very satisfactory to people on either side of that question, whether they buy climate science or don't buy climate science. What I'm proposing we do about this problem, and the other problem, which is $100 a barrel oil, and oil and resources that we have to buy from our enemies, like in Northern Europe, they're buying from Russia. It constrains our ability to do what we need to do globally. And we have to buy oil from our enemies in the United States. I'm proposing removing all subsidies for all forms of energy, nuclear, coal, oil, cylindra, wind, uh, all of them, the, the, the ethanol mandate. Take all of those subsidies away and allow the free market that I'm familiar with. I invest in startup companies. I've started small companies. In this country, we have phenomenal entrepreneurial talent. We can amass billions of dollars privately. And if we keep going like we're going and we get the energy industry out of rent seeking in Washington, take the companies and instead of sending them down to Washington and hiring $1,000 lawyers to get tax breaks, and, 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 uh, and convolutions like cap and trade, put, the, put our energy industry to work solving people's problems. Give us low priced, clean, and abundant energy. So abundant that the entire free world in America is no longer buying oil from our enemies. That's the solution I'm proposing, and I'm finding that it's very, very acceptable and very exciting to people across the political spectrum on the issue of, uh, of climate change and other, uh, other forms of pollution. Thank you very much. Well, no, I, I do not, in any, under any circumstances, support cap and trade. Uh, if there, if there's any warming, in my view, it's not being caused by man. And I believe that if we have uh, all of the, the countries in the world out there dumping pollution out into the environment, if you're going to accept the fact that it is creating a warming environment, well, then why regulate all the industry and all the business in the United States you know, so they can't function anymore and can't produce any energy. Obviously, we know that uh, with the greatest respect to Mr. Rubens, he was for this uh, a while back. He was in favor of carbon tax. Now he's not. So that's, that's a difference. I don't know what motivated his change. You can ask him. But I'm against it. And the last thing we need is a carbon tax. Uh, I, I, I don't understand where you, the business that they're so regulated now, they're almost strangled in every effort to produce anything especially energy that we need so desperately. There shouldn't be any discussion about it. I had hearings when I was the chairman of the Environment and Public Works Committee on cap and trade, on global warming. I went to, down to Woods Hole in, in Rhode Island and, and visited there. There's no evidence that man caused this. You can't find a scientist who will say it. So why are we talking about it? Why are we regulating our business while our business is out of business until while China goes ahead and does what it does and pollutes uh, uh, day after day so you can't even breathe the air? So. Look, this is an important issue. This is a very important issue because we must produce energy. And you can't produce it by even talking about strangling them with more regulation. For heaven's sake, it's basic. We, it, it goes to the security of the United States. We need oil, but we don't have to get it from the, from the Middle East, which is now an issue where we can bring our troops home. For goodness sakes, let's understand, <coughs> turn the free market loose let them produce the energy that we need. Get away from this talk about, about uh, a cap and trade and all these nonsensical regulations that force businesses to almost shut down. They can't even produce it. And finally, and I, I know this for a fact because I had hearings on this too, the technology is so good and so fast when you let the economy, let the private sector work, we're outstripping the need for even to consider any kind of regulation like that. The technology is moving so quickly especially in capturing carbons and other things. It's not necessary, so we shouldn't be talking about it. Maybe we should ask Mr. Rubens why he changed his mind, but not too many weeks ago, he was for it. I'll tell you what. Thank you, Senator. And uh, for this event, uh, well, Incidentally, we do have our first rebuttal challenge in effect by Senator Rubens. Uh, remember, each of you gets three, and 
You got two left. Yeah, uh, I have abandoned an idea that I had in the past because it's dead on arrival politically. I'm a problem solver. We've got a problem with $100 a barrel oil in this country. During our heyday in this country, we had $20 a barrel oil during the period between about 47 and 1972 before the first era of oil embargo. And it was a fundamental part of why this country was incredibly prosperous. This $100 a barrel oil we have right now is punishing us in New Hampshire. We're losing $2 billion a year leading out of New Hampshire because we don't have <coughs> oil or natural gas or coal in the state. Everything that we use on that front, we, we, we send that money out and with it goes jobs. So my, my past solution to that problem and the climate change problem, which I don't deny, I agree, it's, it's a scientific reality and the problem, uh, supported by almost a, a bevy of conservative economists. And the proposal that I had is a revenue neutral tax swap reducing taxes on payroll, jobs, and capital investment, and replacing the lost revenues on those taxes with a carbon tax. That was my idea. Swap two taxes. The, every economist that looked at it said it would grow the economy and create an investment boom in our, in our country that would last about 30 years as a result of that. The idea was dead on arrival. I found that the Democrats have taken the issue, and they've turned it completely partisan, and it was a no-sale among Republicans. I'm a problem solver. I had other ideas like this when I ran for the state senate. If you have candidates who <coughs> knock every idea out of the box and squash it before it can even be examined, you're not going to have bold new ideas. This idea did not work, so I replaced it with an idea that I think, which is removing all energy subsidies to solve the problem. I believe in the private sector. As they say, I'm an investor in this stuff. Uh, and I believe that that will solve the problem. And I believe that it will get enough support from Republicans and Democrats and will free our energy economy and get us out from under under dollar barrel oil and get us out from buying oil and other resources from our enemies. Thank you, Senator. Senator Smith, you, 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 did, you did vote for and support a cap and trade bill. No, I did not. Senator, on to, we have to move no, on to the next question in the interest of In 2002, I did not. Okay, gentlemen, we have to move on to the next question. Cocktail.